If you're coming to Daytona for the first time for the Rolex and you want to know where to shoot as a fan, then this video is for you. Good morning from what is a weirdly cold Florida. So the beanie's on for the rest of the video. Okay, here's here's my aim with this. Uh, over the years shooting here, this will be my third time shooting the Rolex 24 as a credentialed media. And in a lot of cases at Daytona, there's amazing fan access, right? So unlike other tracks where there's quite a lot of separation between where the professionals are allowed to shoot and where a fan can shoot, in this case, there's there's only a fence in between the two a lot of the times. And, and in some spots, you get a pretty clear view of the car. So my aim is to, to run around the track and show you my favorite spots to shoot as a fan if you were coming to Daytona. What's your favorite spot to shoot on this racetrack? Favorite my, spot? My favorite color is blue. Not favorite color. Oh, favorite spot to shoot on this racetrack? Yeah. Well, it's Daytona, so. What is there that you have mean? it. <laughs> Come on. That's my favorite spot okay. to shoot at Daytona. You heard it here first. This is Gavin Baker. He's a professional. He's a real deal. <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram and you watch my stories, you know that this year for the Roar, I I took on, as a, as a freelancer, you, you always say yes to work. And this is sort of the first time I feel like it's really bitten me. Now I refuse to like settle on quality. So it, it ends up just being a lot of late nights, right? So I am very tired, it is very cold, but I committed to making this video for you guys. So here we are. So a few things that you need to know before you sort of make your way to Daytona. First, if you like content like this and you wanna see more in the future, subscribe now. I'll wait. Second, Daytona is a big track and it takes a long time to get from spot to spot. So 24 hours feels like a long time, but it's really not because you spend a lot of that time walking from spot to spot. There are trams behind the International Horseshoe Grandstands that can take you out into the bleachers on the front straightaway, but outside of that, you're gonna be doing a lot of walking. Third, and something a lot of people don't remember their first time coming to Daytona, is bring a step stool. A lot of the fences that I'll show you that you can shoot from are about six feet tall or so, and you are able to be sort of over top of them. So bring a step stool, get yourself above the fence line in places where you need it. Don't be afraid to shoot through the fence, and we'll go over some tips about shooting through a fence here in just a bit, but don't be afraid to shoot through it. But if you do want a clear shot with your camera, Bring a step stool, a little one to two step step stool, something that can fold and easy to carry, and you'll be able to have cleaner shots above the fence line. Now that said, it does help also when you have the camera that high and you are up on a step stool, it does help if you have a monopod, especially on lenses that are a bit longer. So if, if you start getting in the 200 plus range, it may help you to bring a monopod, especially if you're not used to holding a camera steady at that focal length. The last thing I'll sort of say is I'm sort of making my way to the first spot is don't don't feel like you have to get, I feel like a lot of photographers when they come to this deal, feel like they have to get a super tight, clear shot of a car, stop motion at like a four thousandth of a second or, or on video, a super slow-mo shot of a clean car. The thing is like everybody does that, right? So there, this is, Daytona specifically is gonna be massive for fans. So don't be afraid to show fans. Don't be afraid to go wide and show fans in some of the surroundings, palm trees, and the International Horseshoe has flags and banners everywhere. Don't be afraid to show the atmosphere, especially if you're trying to get a job in motorsports. A lot of teams want that kind of stuff. They've, they've got a million photos of the car just on the track. They want photos of atmosphere. This is supposed to be the most well-attended Daytona Rolex 24. You have to show that in the work that you're producing. Okay, now into spot number one. This is above the blue garages, which is where all of the sort of GTP and hypercars will be staged. They have a viewing deck on the top side and it's actually fantastic for a lot of different photos. So you have the garages right below you. So a lot of times when the cars are pushing out for their sessions, you can get great top down shots of the car and the crew going to the grid. But also these benches that they have are fantastic to stand on to get panning shots of the front straightaway. I got some really cool panning shots yesterday during the WeatherTech session. And I was standing right on top of this blue bench step, panning all the way down the front straightaway as they went. And it's, to be honest, it's my first time shooting in this spot this year, but it's it's become one of my favorites. Okay, the second spot. I really like the entry into the International Horseshoe, especially in the morning, because you get a bit of that split light sort of coming across the passenger side of the cars. It's better for photos, I would say, but for video too, a lot, especially in the higher horsepower classes, you get a lot of that downshift braking. 
and then the car is sort of diving as they enter the corner. You can also get glowing brakes, but that might be a bit harder from the fan access spots. But let me just show you what this spot looks like. So like I was saying, in a lot of cases, there's just a fence separating you from where the professionals are allowed to stand. And if you sort of position yourself just right where the banners end and you get real close to the fence, you can get a pretty good shot of the cars entering the corner. Now, like I was saying, don't be intimidated to shoot through a fence. So a, a couple tips to think about if you have to shoot through a fence is definitely be as close as you can. The longer the focal length, the more that fence will disappear and try to keep your aperture as low as possible. Those couple things will definitely help get rid of the fence. That said, if you can find a dark spot in the fence, whether it's sort of a shadow or just a darker section of fence, it also helps get rid of get rid of that from your shots. I'm from the Midwest, so I'm used to cold. And it's definitely been cold at Daytona before. This is by no means the coldest it's been, but I don't know, man, this wind and this temperature, freaking brutal, especially riding around on a scooter. Okay, next is definitely the, the most popular corner for fans is the International Horseshoe, the exit of the International Horseshoe. You've got the flags come Rolex time, you have the Rolex banners, you have the stadium in the background. It's just a, it's just a great shot. It's one of the key sort of Daytona shots. So, like I said, there's only a fence between you and where the professionals are allowed to stand. So, so I'm only able to stand maybe four or five feet in front of where you're at. So if you bring a step stool, I'm, I'm five nine. This fence is every bit of just six foot. So if you bring a little step stool and are able to get up over that fence, you can get at clean shots of the cars entering that corner. This section does get very busy, especially at the beginning of the race. So it's something that you'll have to be mindful of. But if you can find a spot in this section, you, you could spend hours here getting cool shots of all the cars. While you're at the International Horseshoe, it would behoove you to get up on these grandstands and get some like wide panning shots with the fans all sitting down. Again, don't feel like you have to just get clean shots of the car. Feel free to involve the atmosphere. There's a lot of energy in this place and you want your photos and videos to capture that. One last thing I'll say about the entry to turn three is it is also really good at night. It's hard to get from a fan area, but if you shoot back across the track, they'll have the Ferris feel in the background and around 10 o'clock on, on the Rolex race, 10 p.m., they also shoot off fireworks and that's a very popular spot for the professionals. It's gonna be very hard to get as a fan because there's so many professionals lined up right there, but it's also a good shot at night so that you can get the Ferris feel in the background. I'm still, uh, Still new at talking to the camera, so. Yesterday I was getting made fun of in an Instagram story for touching my hat. I shouldn't say it like that. I made fun of myself and uh, people <laughs> agreed. So I'm still getting used to talking to the camera. Uh, a lot of times it feels very like I'm scripted and stuff and that's just because it's relatively unnatural to me at this point, but I'm getting better at it. I'm working on it. I'm trying to share some knowledge. All right, the next spot is sort of the kink. I think it's turn four. I think it's labeled as turn four. You can sort of walk from the International Horseshoe all the way up here, but you're, there's, a, there's a secondary fence and you end up shooting through two fences. Uh, and I'm trying to avoid spots where you have to shoot long distances through a fence. So once you get up here to turn four, turn to the kink, there's, there is no secondary fence. You're able to be sort of right up on the fence again. So. This is a super fast section of the track, and if you end up shooting sort of back towards the grandstands, you can get really, they're super aggressive through here. The cars are going super fast, and, and they're turning super, it's not, it's, not a, it's not a hard turn, but it's a very fast turn, so there's a lot of action in the car. So you can do a lot of cool slow pans, it gives a lot of energy on video, and then they start braking before they head into turn five. Okay, walking up from the kink, uh, you, you arrive at turn five, which is sort of the, I don't even know what it's called. I, the other horseshoe is what I always call it, but it's, it's a bit of a hard shoot from the fan area because you are a bit far back from the track. But what I try to shoot when I'm here, even from the pro area, is to stay a little bit down low so that I can get some shots of the blue wall. So I, I like to have some foreground in the shot. And that's definitely something that you're able to get from this spot. Also, like right at golden hour, this is a fantastic spot. This is sort of the spot that I always go to during golden hour. So when the sun is sort of just getting low, you can shoot back towards the grandstands as they're entering this turn five. And if the sun is low enough, you can actually see inside the driver's cockpit. So this is like the, sh the spot I would go to get their eyes, right? To get their helmets, to get ins a inside look at the cockpit. 
and then as the sun starts to go down sort of right behind the turn one banking of the oval you can get a good going away shot sort of with some sun flares this is a great spot to shoot during golden hour because you can get the drivers coming you can get their eyes but you can also when the sun starts to crest that wall you can get uh, really good sun flares you really can't go you can shoot this spot pretty much any time of day I feel like it goes without saying at this point but all the grandstands in that kink turn four and turn five are also great to shoot always go up high take the scene in shoot the grandstands really make the most of your trip okay I don't have any shots from this section to reference because it's not somewhere that we're allowed to be on the other side of the fence for credentials we're not allowed to be sort of uh, in this section we have to sort of stop up there but this is actually a, as I'm driving around this is actually a pretty cool spot like you can shoot right through the fence and get the exit of turn five so something to think about like as you're walking around don't just take my word for these spots like feel free to to think about what you can get out of it make sure you're paying attention you know a lot of times you only get one trip sort of around the circuit and a full day of shooting so make sure that you're always keep your eyes peeled don't just rely on these guides or, or spots you've seen on photos and all that kind of stuff pay attention think about the shots you can get this is a pretty cool one because you've got you've got layers right so you can you can get the car exiting turn five but you can also catch a car sort of going by on the banking so this, this is a, I actually might revisit this spot for myself all right, one of my last spots sort of on the infield section is gonna be the turn six hairpin. So you come out of turn five, they zoom down into here, and they take this big turn six hairpin before they get back on to sort of the turn one banking of the oval. So I like this shot later in the day. Again, we've gone sort of 180 degrees from the International Horseshoe where we started, the blue garage is over here. International Horseshoe all the way down to the kink area all the way down to the turn five hairpin and now we've made it to sort of the last corner of the infields you can sort of like work this section all the way around so you, you can sort of start sort of in the bleachers go all the way up the fence line all the way up this back fence line and try to catch them sort of getting onto the banking this is a cool section sort of in the in the late part of the day right after golden hour but then also in the evening because you have all the lights from the front straight one of the cool things about this spot though, other than just the range that you have, is you, you are gonna get glowing brake rotors at night here. So if you stand low on this fence line or even up here from the, from the bleachers, they come super quick out of five. And as they come into six, right in this section here, you'll get the, the brake rotors glowing. So this is a cool spot, sort of work, sort of post golden hour and into the evening, you can end up spending a lot of time here. Okay, sort of the last thing that I like to get from the infield section before I move on to my last spot, is is of the banking so there are a lot of sort of daytona signs around the various parts of the banking and again there's only a fence that separates you it's a little hard in these spots because this is a camping zone right so you do want to be respectful and mindful of people's areas but if you can find a space that's either empty or relatively open to having you you can spend a lot of time on these fences getting them going up the banking the turn one and two stuff is is good pretty much most of the day but you can also get if, if this space is too crowded and you're not able to get anything here there's also a section going into the entry of the sort of oval turn three as they come out of the bus stop that is also a great spot for banking shots i feel like it goes without saying but i'm going to say it anyway all the reference shots in this video are from the professional areas just in a lot of cases just on the other side of the fence that i'm showing you i don't have a catalog of stuff from the fan area i'm just trying to show you sort of the idea of the type of shot that you're able to get maybe a little bit different obviously i have big glass and a camera but you have to sort of play to your equipment strengths right if you don't have big glass don't stand in areas where you need big glass to get the shot you want stay wide get the fans get the atmosphere don't make excuses on why you can't get some cool shots at this racetrack one other great spot, uh, obviously there's great spots all around this track, right? Walk around, find spots that work for you. But this is a pretty cool one here. There's these grandstands in the turn two section of the oval, and it's pretty nice. The sun is going to rise sort of right around this section here. So this would actually be a pretty good section uh, in the early morning, but these sort of banners down here also get extremely bright at night. And there's a lot of cool shots that you can get of the car sort of 
zooming away from you into those banners. The good thing about Daytona and why you should consider Daytona, if you, if you can only go to one race, right, and you're trying to get a bunch of shots, obviously this is a big one. The, the energy at this place is insane uh, because of what the race that it is, but there aren't a lot of tracks, maybe this track and maybe Indianapolis's road course, where you are able to get around so easily and freely, right? So between, there's, there's probably only 400 yards or so between where I'm standing now, which is the, the turn two banking, all the way to that international horseshoe. So from the infield section specifically, all the stuff I've talked about, it's, it's extremely easy to get around. So there's a lot of value in terms of time shooting at this track versus some of the bigger tracks, say like VIR, which is massively spread out. Same with like tracks like Road America, massively spread out and sort of hard to get from space to space. Absolutely last but not least are the grandstands. So you can shoot anywhere in the grandstands, right? You can, sh you can start the race. A lot of people start the race sort of just past the start finish line looking down at it. You can walk anywhere you want. There is no, it's basically all GA at the Rolex race. It's not like the Daytona 500 where you have a certain space that you need to sit. You can move all the way up and down the grandstands. You can spend hours shooting from the grandstands. You can start all the way at the end and shoot them coming off the turn four banking. You can shoot all the way at the beginning and get them going into turn one. You can literally spend hours up in the grandstand shooting and a lot of times i do this year i'm definitely committing to spending more time in the grandstands i think the shots are really good i think it's super cool the cars are super fast if you're shooting video they make super good noises coming down the front stretch and it's a place that that you need to spend some time okay so that's going to be all for now i need to get back to work it's also getting very windy and even colder somehow so i'm going to be done feel free to hit the like and comment buttons comments not a button whatever YouTubers say to close these deals out. If this is something that you find helpful, feel free to let me know. We go to Sebring in a few weeks and I'd be happy to make one there. I like making educational content. Of course I have client work, that that's my primary focus always. But when I have time, I like to make this stuff. So let me know and we'll see you in the next one.